Hi there, it's Kathleen Morris here. If you're ready to get started with blogging, but you have no idea where to start, then this 15 minute tutorial is for you. I'll help you sign up for a blog with EduBlogs and then help you learn how you can access your blog and your dashboard. We'll take a look at how to write posts and pages and how to approve your comments. And we'll also look at how you can change the theme of your blog and change your settings. Finally, I'll let you know where you can find all the extra help you'll need to keep going with blogging. Let's get started. So you're ready to start blogging. The first thing you'll need to do, of course, is get yourself a blog. All you need to do is go to edublogs.org. Unless, of course, your school or district has their own campus press subscription. On the EduBlogs homepage, you'll see a box that says get a free blog. You just need to enter a username and password and then click on sign up. On the next page, you'll be prompted to add a little bit more information, like your email address. You'll also be asked to choose your blog URL. It's important to remember that you can't change your blog URL. So think carefully about choosing something that will last. You might not want to call your blog grade three 2018 because in 2019 you might be teaching grade five and you might have to start a new blog which can be frustrating. Once you've signed up for a blog, you'll get an email that reminds you of your blog URL and your login details. You'll be able to click on a link in your email to get to your blog dashboard. The dashboard is the back end of your blog. This is a part of your blog that only you can access unless you add other people. And this is where you can change the look and feel of your blog as well as publish new content like posts and pages and see if anyone's commented on your blog and approve, to comment, approve your comments or reply to them. So if we want to have a look at the front end of our blog, you just type the URL into your address bar. My URL for my new blog here is mrskmorris.edublogs.org. I can see that my brand new blog has a simple post and a few things on the sidebar here, but that's all just there by default and I'll be able to change all of that. To do that, I'll have to go back to the dashboard. So how do I get into the dashboard? There are a couple of ways. You'll see there's an EduBlogs toolbar up the top here. If I'm not logged in, you'll see the words log in. And if you are logged in like I am here, there's a few shortcuts to get to your dashboard. You can click on new and go to a new post, for example. Or if you hover over your name, you'll be able to go straight into your dashboard there. And if you want to know the address to get to your dashboard, you can just do a slash at the end of your blog URL and then WP for WordPress hyphen and then you can write in admin or login works as well. When I press enter, this will take me straight to my dashboard. Some people like to have both their dashboard and their blog URL bookmarked because when you're working on your blog, you sometimes want to switch between your dashboard and your blog to see what it looks like when you publish something. Let's take a look around your dashboard. When you land on your dashboard, the first thing you'll see is your reader. This is where you can read and comment on other blogs. By default, you should see all the posts we've written recently on the EduBlogger. The EduBlogger.com is just EduBlog's blog about blogging. You can also add other blogs that you're interested in to your reader. And if you end up having student blogs, you'll be able to see them there as well. On the left hand side, you'll be able to see lots of options. If you're totally new to blogging, you won't need to use all these options to start with but there are a couple that you'll use a lot. One of these is posts. When you ho hover over posts, you'll see the options, all posts, add new and categories and tags. If we click on all posts, we'll be able to see that there's one post here 
and it's called Hello World. That's the one we looked at that was on our blog by default. When you hover over the title Hello World, you'll see that you can edit it or you can trash it if you don't want it or you can have a look at it as well. Let's click on edit and then we can make this post our own. Up the top is where you write the title of your post. You can leave it as Hello World or you can make it something else. Now in this box, you can highlight all the text and then just press delete. Now I can write my own text. Welcome to my blog. It's just like typing in a word processor, like Microsoft Word. Although it's important to remember not to actually type your posts in Word and then copy and paste them into your blog, that can cause problems with bad code. So just always type your post directly into your blog. One thing you might want to do is sometimes link to other websites. If I write, check out the EduBlogger, I might want to link to the EduBlogger for other people to visit. All I need to do is get the URL of the site I want to link to. I'm just going to copy that. Then you highlight the words you want to be linked. Click on the link icon here and just type or paste in the URL and click on the arrow. Then when people are reading your post, they'll be able to click on those words to get to the site. Another thing you'll probably want to do is add images to your blog posts. This is really simple. You just click on add media, then you can upload your files, just select them from wherever they're located on your computer. Um, I'm going to insert this picture. On the right, you'll see you can add a few options like a title and a caption. Alt text is a really good idea to add. This is just a description of what the image looks like, which can help your visually impaired readers. You can also change your alignment and size. And when you're ready, click on insert into post and you should see it appear there. Now there's lots of options up the top here. You can highlight your text and change your size. It will be paragraph size for your regular writing, but you can also have headings. You can highlight and then make your text bold or italics. There's bullet points and numbered lists and so on. When you hover over all these icons, it tells you what it is. And the last icon here is the toolbar toggle, which will show you some other options that you might like to use, like changing your text color. When your post is ready, you can click on preview changes up the top here and it will open your post in a new tab so you can see what it looks like on your blog. And when you're happy to publish it, you can just click on update. If this was a brand new post, this button would just say publish. You might want to add some pages to your blog as well with some more static information like your class timetable or your commenting guidelines. To do this, you'll find pages on the left hand side here. When you hover over the word pages, you'll see all pages and add new. When you click on add new, you'll see that adding a page is just like writing a post. Up the top, you enter your title and then in the box here, you just write whatever you like. You can add links and images just the same as if you're writing a post. When you're ready, you can click on preview to see what your page is looking like. And when you're happy with the way it looks, all you need to do is hit publish. Another thing you might want to know about is comments. So over on the left hand side, you'll see the comments option and you can look at all your comments. By default, there should be one comment here which was automatically written for your Hello World post. And it's already been approved, but if you're not happy with it, you can unapprove it or you can reply to it. If I click on reply, I'll see a box here where I can write back and say thank you for the comment. Then I just press reply. 
Um, and your other options are to edit it. So if it was students work and you wanted to edit it before it was published, you can do that. If it's spam, just click on spam or put it in the bin if you don't want it to be published. So you'll see next to pending, there's a zero. That means I've got no comments waiting for me to approve. But once you start getting comments on your blog, you'll see a little icon next to comments that will tell you the number of comments you need to check. And up here next to pending, you'll see the number as well. And if you click on the word pending, you'll be able to go straight to all the comments that you need to moderate so that you can go through them and approve them or not. You may have noticed that when you first set up a blog, it looks pretty bland to begin with. But you can change the look and feel of your blog and really personalize it to make it your own. And the way you do this is through themes. Let's go back into our dashboard and if we click on appearance and themes, we'll be able to see that there are hundreds of themes available to really make our blog our own. There's options up the top for different categories of themes. If I click on popular, I can see what other people have liked using for their blogs. You'll see that some of the themes, like this one here, collar, has a header image. So you might want a theme like that if you want to put a picture of your class or school in there. If there's a theme that you think might work for you, you can hover over it and click on live preview. When you do that, you'll be able to see what your blog would look like with this, with this theme without actually committing to it. So when it loads here, I'll be able to see that my blog titles up here, Kathleen Morris, and here's the post I've just written. My sidebar is now on the right hand side because that's the way this theme works. If I want to, I can play around with the options here, like the color scheme, the background image, and so on. And if I'm happy with it, I just click on save and activate. Now, if I go back to my blog and refresh that, or click on the title of my blog, I'll be able to see what it looks like. If I'm not happy with it, of course, I can go and keep playing around with themes, but otherwise, it's fun to have a new look to your blog. The final thing we'll take a look at for now is some settings. Let's click on settings over on the left hand side here and we'll first go into our general settings. Here you can change the site title. Now you might remember that I said you can't change the URL of your blog, but you can change the site title. So instead of calling my blog Kathleen Morris, I might want to call it Mrs. Morris's class. The tagline is what shows up under your site title, just here. By default, it will say just another EduBlog site. So you might want to change it to something that suits you. I might write here a a grade four class from Australia. You can change your email address, your language and your time zone if you want to um, and your date as well. When you're happy with that click on save changes. If you look in your reading settings, you'll be able to see that this is where you can change your site visibility. If you want to make your blog private or have it so only logged in EduBlogs users can access your site or you can have your blog totally password protected. If you click on discussions, this is where you can change your commenting settings. One of the options you might wanna take a look at is you might want to tick that all your comments have to be manually approved. And you can also change your settings of whether you get an email when you get new comments. It can feel really overwhelming when you first get started with blogging and you're just working out how to navigate your dashboard. It might feel like there are so many options and you can't keep track of what all these tools are. 
try not to worry because as long as you know how to do a few basics like adding posts and checking your comments, you'll pick up the other things over time. You don't need to know everything at once. Also remember, if you go to help.edublogs.org, this is where you can find all our user guides. You can type in the search bar to find what you're after, or you can browse through some of the guides. And if you get stuck and you can't figure it out, you can always email the support team. Just email support at edublogs.org.